Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily talk. Um, before I introduce myself, let's just remind you. Let me remind you that this is episode number 431. Actually, I'm not reminding you, you didn't know this before. This is episode 431, and the title of the topic today is um, You attract from pain or from pleasure. Do you know which you're using? And it might surprise you, so we'll get into that one. So before I start, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby, and thanks for all the people coming in to watch live, I appreciate it. Um, yes, my name is Barry Selby, I did that part. <laughs> I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspired these talks way back in December 2016, is where I started with these, when they were weekly, and then now they're daily. That's why it's 431 of these called Messages to the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. That was the title. And each day I do a talk about love and relationships, masculine and feminine polarity, deeper conversations about how you get what you want, where you're going, what you're looking for, stuff like that. And today's about how you get what you want and the idea about how you attract things. And so the topic today, which is again, is number 431, is you attract from pain or from pleasure. One, do you know which you're using, and two, do you know how to change it? Because for some people out there, maybe not you, but people you know, let's just say this in a simple terms, um, they haven't got a clue. <laughs> I trust you do, and this may in fact be a confirmation for you or a reminder versus a light bulb moment for you, but if it's a light bulb moment, great, then hopefully you'll change your life for the better. So first of all, let me put some things in context. Attraction is a skill more naturally owned by the feminine energy. And before you jump into conclusions, let me quantify this. Both men and women have feminine qualities within them. As in both men and women have masculine qualities within them. I talked about this before. So the attraction ability for both men and women resides in the feminine qualities within them. Women generally have more easy access to that than men do. In fact, women have an ability to manifest things more quickly than men do generally because they're more aligned to that feminine piece than the men are. So for men watching this, don't lose hope. <laughs> you too can have the ability to attract, you've just got to just hone in on that skill set more intentionally than women naturally do. So now you know that part. Second part is, and this is the crux as it were, is the ability to attract is influenced, or should say what you attract is influenced from generally two um, buckets of, of energy, shall we say. One of which is pain, one of which is pleasure or love in the context I want to use. Most people think, oh, well, I know what I want, I'm getting clear, I'm going to attract what I want. But what shows up doesn't often match that for a lot of people. And it's sometimes for send people, they sort of think, well, I'll just keep doing it, eventually I'll get what I want. It's persistence and it's ineffective because, and to quote, or as a quote that's attributed to Albert Einstein, doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results is a definition of insanity. And if you are putting out the same intention again and again, it ain't happening, that's kind of insane. So if that's happening to you, make sure you listen up for more, inter more details about this. Second, second, no, third. Third piece, maybe a subject, subset of two. So the second one. I'm losing track of my numbers, but bear with me, because, by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, they're never scripted, <laughs> as you can probably tell from this one. They're basically downloads and channels of information that come in through and from memory, as well as from spirit and other places too. So sometimes you get some great insights without me even planning them, and hopefully it's the case this time. So let me start with one of the key point components again, which is this piece about how you attract. And as I said, you do have the ability to attract from pain or from pleasure, but what you may not realize is you may, you may not have conscious control of which one's doing it. And the reason being is the, um, the attractions based on the magnitude of energy is a good way of putting it. So when you're attracting something into your life, and if you're not, and, and if you're not getting what you want in life, then the magnitude of energy that's pulling in what you are getting should indicate to you which, way, which place it's coming from. So let's work backwards. If you're attracting what you want and it shows up, I should say, no, let's back it, no, fully backwards. And I have to rewind in my head for a second there. So, what shows up in your life? 
Is it what you want or what you don't want? If it's what you want, then likely the likely path is that you're coming from a place of intentional conscious attraction, which is great. More power to you. Keep doing it. You're doing a great job. But for most of people on the planet, they're, um, let's say this, the result they're getting isn't what they want. In fact, especially in a relationship context, context I'm using that as a, as a model because where I, 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 my work is based, that the relationships that are attracting, the results of what you're attracting, or I should say what's showing up in your life in terms of partnership, may look good on the outside or look good in the first 10 days, two weeks, two months. But as time goes by, and as you get below the surface, you discover what you're attracting doesn't come close to what you really want. In fact, you're getting the things you don't want, and you're getting them more than once, like repeatedly. This is an indication that your attraction um, source, the focus of energy that's bringing you what you think you want, is focused in a negative place. And it's got the greater amplitude, greater magnitude, as I mentioned, because it's overriding what you're consciously intending. Because for most people, the results of relationships you're getting aren't the ones you're intending to get. What you want is one thing, but we're getting is something else. And I talked about this before in context, in conversation several times about how you have a um, different result showing up than you, what you want because you have a different energy driving the boat, as it were, driving the car. So I'm using this analogy this way to make sure you get the point of this, that between pain and pleasure, there are, there's quite a range, obviously so. And if you are someone who's had relationships that are repeating themselves with different partners and they're not what you want, then I would strongly suggest that the pain is winning in the um, balance of power of what's attracting what you want. Make it sense so far, I trust. If that's the case, then you have an option. Actually, you have two options. One is simply to put up with it and just deal with it and suffer through it, which is not what I recommend to anybody. But you may have been told by other people saying it's best you can get, sell for what you have, don't try and get beyond what you're going, stay where you are. Don't listen to those people, they're crazy. You deserve the best, and if you're willing to hold out for the best, then this is like, listen up. Because you have two main energetic magnitudes of attraction energy, one in the pain side, one in the pleasure side, and the pain is stronger based on what you've seen in your experience, if you're, getting what, if you're not getting what you want, then the focus becomes to how to reduce that pain and increase the pleasure magnitude, so that becomes a stronger pull. Again, I trust this is making sense. If the pain is still pulling, then it's got more power than the pleasure you want to attract. Clear? I trust it is. So, what to do? Well, the methodology to reduce the pain has different flavors, different ways of doing things, different tools. And to give you some just some broad um, tools in this place, and again, using the relationship attraction as the model in which I'm going to talk about this, if you're not getting what you want, there's an attachment and association in the pain side of things, sorry, uh, pain side of things, which I'll retry the camera I'm playing here, that is still running the show. And that belief structure, that rule book, that um, decision making is still maintaining what it is used to doing, which is the pain. You're, getting, you're not getting what you want, so you're out of alignment. So then what, what has to happen, you can't, and let me be clear about this, you can't destroy that pain. It's part of you. What you can do, and with that programming as well, is, is um, well, I'm say it this way. Make friends with it, understand it, understand it, reassign it. Which sounds really weird, I know. But if you don't, if you, when you work with me, this is what we talk about. So it sounds crazy, but it works. So what happens is your pain driver for the intention of your attraction, which is got more power than your pleasure driver has to be changed obviously so and if you're in a place where you are still seeking a way to get there then this might make some sense so again make friends with it understand it reassign it how does that work that pain driver as I keep using the term is basically the memories you have of in the case of a relationship painful relationship experiences. Makes sense so far. But the thing about it is it's not just your adult relationships. It's your childhood relationships too. Because all of those are rolled up in the same arena in your mind, in your heart, in your memory. 
and they are building up that pain driver, as it were, giving it more power, more magnitude, more, in, more influence. Not the to one doing that consciously, because your mind doesn't say, I don't want that, but why is it still happening? Because that's the way the wiring is up in, set up inside. And until you change that whole paradigm, and you've got to know what it is before you change it, you won't be able to move into the little pleasure side. So, the way to best approach this, first of all, is to truly and honestly to have a deep, um, I mean, well, it's an AA term, but a sense of inventory, as a self-inventory, reflecting on yourself and looking at your own life and seeing where those negative seeds were planted. Because if you're willing to look, you can get results. And when you go back and look at your childhood and your younger, younger years, particularly, particularly pre-teen and teen, notice how your relationship experiences, your relationship um, memories, stack up. And if you have several of these that don't fit what you really want, but they've, gained some, they've become repetitive and they're repeating themselves now in your adult life, which is what's happening most likely, that's where the influence is out of alignment. So, first of all, get to know it, as I mentioned. And by getting to know it means become very clear about what it is that's driving this ship, what's driving your pain center, as it were, that's pushing you forward into the relationships you don't want. Second thing is then, is does it get to know it? I'll make friends with it. Yes. I don't remember what I'm teaching here. <laughs> so get to recognize it, make friends with it, reassign it. So then the next level of work is to really understand that that part of you, that piece in here that's driving the ship, isn't bad. It's just misassigned. And this is the thing. That part of you is why you can't destroy it because it is part of who you are. And you don't want to destroy part of yourself. Like you don't cut your leg off, would you? Same thing with this part of you. This part of you is part of who you are. It's just been, it's like you're giving it um, that incorrect orders and it's following orders perfectly. So it's a really loyal and aligned piece, but the instructions it, get, it was given weren't aligned to what you want. This is the key. So recognize it, make friends with it. Next part is to reassign it. What that reassignment is, is changing the rules it lives by. Now I'm making this sound very simple, but it is a lot deeper than this. And this is what, again, this is what I do with my coaching. So you start off with the idea that you have, um, you, re you recognize, or so sorry, excuse me. Recognition, yes. You recognize that, that, that pain driven, pain driver. You, you understand it, you made friends with it, now you can reassign it. And reassigning means, because again, that wiring is in place, that negative driver was reinforced from repetitive experiences of negative relationships. So in this context of relationship, the only way to change that is change the wiring itself, which means change the programming, change the beliefs, change the rules, change the logic that's still running that show. Because, because again, that aspect, that negative aspect, is still doing what it thinks is right to serve you. And yes, that negative driver is here to serve you. Even though it might be doing the wrong thing for you, going, that doesn't make sense. It's the truth. It is actually here to serve you. So, taking that aspect and reassigning it, what you're literally doing is moving it from the negative side to the positive side. Now, if, if only it was that quick. <laughs> it does take some work. But when you do shift it to the, to, the, to the pleasure side, as it were, where you have an alignment, where what's the wiring inside is aligned to your intention and vision and direction, then from this place, you can more easily attract what you want. Now, I said I'm using relationship as the paradigm for this. The truth is it applies to any area, be it money, career, health, travel, any of these things. If you have negative programming, negative drivers in your consciousness about those experiences you, and it will drive the ship negatively, you have to change its wiring by first of all knowing it, make friends with it, and then reassigning it so that it becomes a pleasure driver, meaning it becomes aligned to your true values. That shift from this side to this side, from the, from the pain to the pleasure, is a transformational experience that will lift your life forever. This wiring, as I talk about, this programming, this driver, as I mentioned, it's all inside of you, and again, it's something that is part of you, and you don't, you don't want to destroy it, as I said. You don't want to negate it. You don't want to um, crush it, as it were. What you want is to reassign it, because when you put it in alignment with the pleasure side, let's just say that your ability to attract will be magnified in the way that you want it to be, like you've never dreamed possible. That's the magic of this work, and that's the secret to my success. <laughs> Certainly it's the work that I do with my clients, and that understanding, that shift, that peace, could change your life.
if you're willing to do the work. So again, your ability to attract is based in your feminine gifts. That's what, true for men and women. It's driven by pleasure or by pain drivers based upon what your results are. And again, looking from the back, looking from the results back to the beginning, what are you getting in your life? What are you attracting in your life? If it isn't what you want, it's most likely driven by the pain, excuse me, this side, pain driver versus the pleasure driver. That being the case, there's some rewiring to do. So change the programming from the pain to the pleasure, and then you can change your goals, your intentions, your directions to attract what you really want. This is the magic of life at work. Do this work, whether you're on your own, through books, working with me, because this is one of my specialities. I'm doing it on myself as well, by the way, as, with, as I'm talking, because this is actually telling myself to remind myself in areas I'm working on to do the same thing. So this is not just stuff I'm spouting. This is personally learned, lived experience and growth. I learned this, basically I learned this a lot of, in my master's program. So I, I have been studying this for a while, a long time, and this will help you. So if you want help in this area, I will offer you how to get in touch with me in a moment. But I want to make sure that you get this understanding. If any questions or comments, please put them below. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, which you probably aren't, because most people watch it on YouTube or on listen to our podcast, Facebook Live is where you can put in comments and questions. If you're missing the opportunity to do that because you're watching it on YouTube, you can put comments below on the YouTube broadcast, and I'll respond later on as well. If you listen to the podcast, um, you have to email me because <laughs> there's no way of commenting on the the iTunes podcast to ask questions about what I'm saying. So, just to get, to let you know where those are. On Facebook, after I've done the Facebook Live, it goes onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby Author. It also goes onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And then it goes onto my podcast, which is Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. I mentioned a way to get in touch because if this is speaking to you and this is resonating with you, get some help, please. I can help you with this. As I mentioned, I do offer a discovery session as my gift. It's a 30 minute free conversation just to see where you are and what's out of alignment and see if I can help you with it. And there's no commitment, there's no requirements, just simply show up, talk, and let's see if you make some progress. Go to barryselby.com forward slash chat, which is the link to my Let's Chat discovery session. You can enter a time on my calendar, fill out the form, and sign up right there. And that, I think, is it. I appreciate you watching and hoping this has been of use to you. I do these talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as I mentioned. So tomorrow will be number 452. No. 432, jumping ahead of myself. Yikes. Um, feel free to join me again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Bring your questions, bring your interest, bring your learning hat, and uh, hope it's been of help to you. If this, has, if this has been of help to you, great. Let me know that in the comments as well. If there's something you want to trigger, change, shift, your homework, yes, I give homework, is to take this idea to heart, to look at your life and the results you're creating and what's happening in your life, and seeing where it's out of alignment or in alignment to what you really want. If it's out of alignment, as it's driven by pain, there's some work to do to shift it. If it's in alignment, keep going. You're on the right track. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.